Wilson. Oh, hello, Dennis. Can I see your collection of old dollar bills? Dollar bills? Oh, you must mean my old coin collection. I don't collect old bills. Mrs. Elkins said you did. She said that? I heard her. She says you've still got the first dollar bill you ever made. <laughs> Charlie's loaning us these spotlights for nothing. What magic word did you use? Oh, I just told him we were having a Cub Scout circus here tomorrow night. Gee, honey, you're pretty. Are you sure you'd rather be a den mother than a movie queen? <laughs> well, being a den mother may be less glamorous, but I like it. Well, it just so happens that I think den mothers are pretty glamorous. <laughs> Boy, what a world. Might as well stop making my costume, Mom. Aren't you going to be the lion tamer at the circus tomorrow night? Not the way things are going. Joel Snyder's mother won't let him be the rear end of a lion. <laughs> well, uh, couldn't just one boy wear the lion costume? Cheapers, Dad. I'd look pretty silly as a lion tamer if the lion wasn't any bigger than me. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find another boy at school tomorrow who'll do it. Well, I sure hope so. Well, now here. Let's try on your tailcoat. Oh, boy, Mom, this is swell. Maybe we can have a Cub Scout circus after all. Now I just gotta find the other half of my lion. <laughs> George, you've got to stop upsetting yourself this way. Well, Martha, why shouldn't I be upset? Crinky's going to blast me in that paper of his, and you know it. He's interviewing you for his important people column. What makes you think he's going to blast you? Well, for one thing, we have never gotten along very well, and I did make him look pretty silly last spring. Maybe he's forgotten all that fuss about his statue of the town's first settler. Martha, people are still laughing at Crinky for putting up that statue of Simon Peterson, first settler, and I proved he was third. And when they made Crinky tear it down, he's just never forgiven me. Why, he'd love to make me look ridiculous in his paper. Uh-oh, there he is now. I'll get it, dear. Come in, Mr. Crinky. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. Oh, 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 oh. well, good evening, Crinky. Hey, good evening. <laughs> I just wanted to get a line on some of the important things you've done, George. Fine, come in, sit down. Uh, uh, no, you sit down. <laughs> You know, George, uh, my readers have recommended you for my important people column. Oh, well, I'll do everything I can to help, Crinky. Ever been in the penitentiary? <laughs> the penitentiary? What kind of article are you writing about me anyway? Have to get the facts, George. Painful as they may be to both of us. <laughs> now, uh, when you came to live in our fair city, did you have to leave the town you came from? What? I mean, uh, did they let you go quietly, or were they nasty about it? Now, look here, Crinky. They were very pleasant about my leaving town. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure we'd be able to find a few more little juicy mistakes in your life, George. Anybody who's lived as long as you have is bound to have two or three skeletons rattling around in the closet. <laughs> There are no skeletons in your closet, dear. Well, how can we be sure? I must have done something I'm ashamed of. <laughs> oh, now what? I'll get it, dear. Hi, Mrs. Wilson. My, you're dressed up, Dennis. I came home to show you and Mr. Wilson my coat for the Cub Scout Circus. Well, it's a beautiful red coat. Well, what are you? A lion tamer. Do you suppose Mr. Wilson has a whip I could borrow? A whip? Good heavens, Dennis. Whips went out with a horse and buggy. Your father's old riding crop's around somewhere. Maybe that would do for Dennis. A riding crop would be swell, Mrs. Wilson. I could make a whip out of it. Oh, Martha, a man is out to ruin my life and you're worrying about riding crops. 
I'll get you some of your nerve medicine, dear. And then you and Dennis can look for the riding crop. Thanks, Mrs. Wilson. Next to my lion problem, my whip problem is my biggest one. <laughs> Boy, I can make a whip out of it. Thanks, Mr. Wilson. Now, you run along now, Dennis. I have a lot of very important things to worry about. Hey, Mr. Wilson, a hmm? picture. What? Gee, that's a funny looking picture. Good. Heavens, I thought that thing had been thrown out years ago. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Wilson? Well, that's me, Dennis, once when I was a flagpole sitter. <laughs> a what? Flagpole sitter, that's me up on top. Boy, that's a funny thing to do. It was a county contest and I was a champion. 27 days. 27 days? Sitting on top of a flagpole? That's right. Boy, what crazy things you did in the olden days. Olden days? <laughs> it took great skill, Dennis. Still, I suppose it would seem ridiculous today. The sort of thing some people might consider a... <laughs> Boy, wait till I tell Tommy about this! Tommy! No, Dennis, you're not going to tell anybody about that picture. It should never have... It, uh, uh, oh, Dennis, little friend, uh, let you and I have a nice little chat. <laughs> now, we are good friends, aren't we? Sure! And you know what good friends do for each other, don't you? Sure! Pops. Yeah, yes, but they also keep each other's skeleton. And uh, I mean, one of each other's secrets. Do you mean your flagpole sitting is a secret? Oh, Dennis, it's one of my dark, uh, I mean, one of my deepest secrets. Can I just tell Tommy? Dennis, I don't want anybody. It, it, it'll be our secret. Good friends go through thick and thin for each other. Well, gee, Mr. Wilson. If it's that important... Oh, it is. And when you have an important problem, a really important problem, who do you think will help you with it? You? Your friend, good old Mr. Wilson. Really? <laughs> You'd help me with my lion problem? Well, Dennis, <laughs> I, I, I said that good friends go through thick and thin for each other. Of course. Uh, Dennis, just what is your lion problem? I need a big lion to tame in the Cub Scout Circus. And you'd be just great. You're bigger than two little boys any day. I better go tell Mom to make that costume big. Really big. Dennis, wait a minute. Good heavens, Dennis. I can't wear a, a lion costume. I'm grown up, and grown ups just can't do that kind of thing. Especially when they're having articles in the paper about them. Nobody has to know who you are once you're in the costume. I know, Dennis, but don't you have a more important problem? Gosh, no, Mr. Wilson. This may be my last chance to be a lion tamer. But, uh, uh... And who the lion is can be another secret we have. It's fun being good friends, isn't it, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> Did Mr. Wilson have a whip, dear? No, but he had a riding crop. I'm gonna make a whip out of it. Look, Dad. Say, hey, how about that? I might have a little piece of leather to put on the end of it. Thanks, Dad. You know, I've been thinking, Mom, instead of having two little boys for my lion, why don't I just have one big boy? Well, do you know someone who might do it? I think so. I'd have to know his size. Where would he come up to on your father? Oh, he'd come up almost to Dad's head. And he's wider, too. <laughs> Does Mother let him do it? I'm sure she'll let him. You'll make that costume big, won't you, Mom? Oh, I will, real big. Now, why don't you run on up to bed, dear? Okay. Night, Mom. Night, Dad. Night, Dad. Night, son. That little boy sounds rather big for his age. I have a feeling that boy is old for his age, too. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Henry? <laughs> Mr. Wilson's the only boy around here who fits that description. And he's the only one Dennis went to see tonight. But why would Mr. Wilson do it? Why, it's obvious, honey. Our son is growing up to be one of the great salesmen of all time. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be the best thing in the 
circus tonight. Get down on all fours and I'll show you. <sighs> if Crinky could only see me now. See how much like a lion you are? Dennis, you know, maybe, maybe it might be even better for you if I rented you a small, real lion. An old tame, of course. That would be against Cub Scout rules. Everything in the circus has got to be homemade. Oh, I see. Now, Mr. Wilson, roar. Roar? Dennis, I said I'd be your lion, but I did not agree to roar. Well, if you don't roar, how else will the audience know you're ferocious? Well, just put it on the program in large letters, ferocious lion. There is going to be a program. And what kind of a lion does roar? Well, a nice, polite, aging lion. And the lion I tame has got to be wild. You know, the kind that roars. Oh, all right, Dennis, I'll roar for you. But I'm not saying how good it'll be. After all, lions have had more practice at it than I've had. <laughs> <laughs> That's swell, Mr. Wilson. Now do it louder. Louder? Oh, dear. <clears throat> That's great, Mr. Wilson. And now... You jump up here and roar. I jump up there, too? Sure. When a lion's in your power, you can make him do anything. I'm certainly in your power, but whether I can make it up there or not's another thing. Sure you can, Mr. Wilson. Just try it and you'll see. Now jump up here and roar! Wow! Adam boy, Mr. Wilson! From the way things are going, Crinky's article about me will probably be on the obituary page. <laughs> Mr. Millard, come on in. Came a little early for the circus, Mitchell. Mr. Crinky asked me to take a few photographs for tomorrow's paper. I'm a gorilla. Well, you could have fooled me. I didn't know Hubert was a member of the den. No, he joined just in time to be a gorilla. I hope you don't mind my taking the photographs, but Mr. Crinky is my boss. Not at all. Come on in. <laughs> Martha, I can't be a lion tonight. I've almost got a temperature. Now, George, you made Dennis a promise. Oh, I know, but... Well, Martha, suppose somehow Crinky finds out about it. Why, he'd make a skeleton in the closet out of it. Nobody will know that you're in that costume except Dennis and me. Well, my dear, everybody reads his important people column, and... Well, I've always wanted something written about me in a dignified way. I've never been in who's who or even what's that. <laughs> Most things written about me have hardly been dignified. Ugh, I can still see the headline, Class Orator Falls into Orchestra Pit. I know how truly dignified you are, dear. And so does everyone else. And they'll keep on knowing it no matter what Mr. Crinky writes. I'll get it, dear. Oh, Martha, wait. That, that could be Crinky. <laughs> Wilson? Is Mr. Wilson ready? Yes, dear. Come in. George, it's Dennis. Guess what, Mr. Wilson? If we're lucky, our picture will be in the paper tomorrow. Our picture? Mr. Millard's taking some photos for Mr. Crinky tonight. I knew it, Martha. You see, I'll bet anything that Crinky has his assistant over there just to spy on me. Now, George, even if the picture is taken, nobody will know that you're in the costume. Well, suppose they have X-ray film of some kind. I wouldn't put anything past that, Crinky. Now, George, <laughs> you really do want to keep your promise to Dennis. I'm keeping mine, Mr. Wilson. I haven't told Mr. Crinky or anybody about your flagpole sitting. You see? Now put on your head, George, and go to the circus. Oh, it's like Martha. Come on, Mr. Wilson. Right here. <laughs> oh, good evening. Come on in. Right on in there. Thank you. Oh, my. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. You can put your hats around there. Hi, how are you tonight? 
You can take a seat down in front if you want. All right, you want to sit in there? You give it back to me, it's mine. I'm just gonna use it. I'll give it back. I want it now. Well, get it. Boys, stop it. What's this all about? He stole my nose. I just wanted to wear it during my opening speech. Well, Tommy, I think you'd better give it back. A clown really needs his nose. <laughs> Golly, why do I have to be just me tonight? <laughs> now, Tommy, you have to make the opening speech. You'd better stand over here and be ready, because it's just about time to go in. Come on, boys, line up. The circus is ready to begin. <laughs> Sheepers, if you're worried about someone seeing you, why don't you put on your hat? Because it's stuffy in there. Why, now, Hubert, you get in line. It's time to start, honey. Is everybody here? Well, they're not all here, but I think we can start. On with the circus. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Den 3's first annual Cub Scout Circus. But first, a song. We're the World Cubs, we're the Bear Cubs, and true line Cubs all together. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, they've started. We've got to go line up. Oh, good grief. <laughs> what happened, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> <laughs> Father left the nail on the side of his house. That's what's happened. And behind. The den will have a field trip tomorrow morning to hunt fossils. Mrs. Mitchell, our den mother, wants me to say that there will be refreshments for everyone after the show. And now, on to the circus. Here's our ringmaster, Mr. Mitchell. Ladies and gentlemen, it's good to see so many of you out here tonight. Our performers are in the wings, ready to go on. And now, without further delay, here is the most talented gorilla that ever hit our shores. The son of King Kong, Garbala. <laughs> Dennis, I can't go in there like that. I better get Mom to sew you back up. Dennis, what about our secret? Mom's a good friend of mine too, Mr. Wilson. Don't have to worry about her. Well, you know, I bet she's keeping secrets that we don't even know about. <laughs> and now here's a riddle for you. What's tall and short and dances on all four legs? Why, a dancing giraffe, of course. That's your cue, boys. You're on. Who bought banana, Mrs. Mitchell? I didn't have time to finish. <laughs> Mom? Dennis, where's your lion? Something's wrong with his costume. Come look at it. Oh, dear. Well, I'd better check with your father. Mom? If you recognize my lion, it's a secret, okay? <laughs> my lips are sealed. <laughs> Good. We'll be waiting in the kitchen. What's the matter, honey? I have a little repair work to do. Do you think you can handle things out here, too, for a moment? Well, sure. Oh, here, Ringmaster, hold this. It belongs to the dancing giraffe. <laughs> I wonder which half. <laughs> idea of where the costume leaves off and I begin. I'm sorry. <laughs> there, I think that does it. Oh, fine. 
Oh, and Mr. Wilson, about your secret. Don't worry, I'll keep it. Oh, thank you, Alice. Boy, am I glad I'm a Cub Scout. Where else would I ever get to be a lion tamer? Now, hold out of your seats, folks. You're about to see a Cub Scout risk his life in an attempt to tame the most ferocious of animals, the king of the beasts. People who faint easily are advised to leave now. <laughs> Here it is, the contest of the century, boy versus beast. This picture belongs on the front page of tomorrow's paper. <laughs> Mr. Millard says you can have more copies of the picture if you want them. More? I don't even want this one. Martha, this is just the sort of thing Crinky was dying to get his hands on. He'll make me look foolish for sure. <laughs> now, who can that be? Hello, Mrs. Wilson. Come in, Mr. Crinky. I just stopped by to see George for a minute. I just wanted to be sure you had a copy of this photo Millard took last night. <clears throat> Quite a likeness, isn't it? Crinky, you wouldn't dare print that picture of me in your paper. How's this for a headline? George Wilson plunges into second childhood as oldest Cub Scout in the world. <laughs> It isn't often I get a chance to write about a skeleton in somebody's closet and print a picture about it, too. <laughs> now, look here, Cranky. I... Mr. Wilson! Hey, Mr. Wilson, you've still got our secret. There's nothing about you in this morning's paper. Yes. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Cranky. Well, it doesn't matter, anyway. The, the secret's out. Do you mean Mr. Cranky knows about you being a champion flagpole sitter? Yes! <laughs> Well, well, George, champion flagpole sitter, too, eh? <laughs> now my article will have two juicy skeletons in your closet. But I thought you said the secret was out. That's all right, Dennis. There are no secrets among old friends. Then I can tell everybody about you being the front end of a giraffe last night. Huh, Mr. Crinky? <laughs> Dennis, you promised. Right in your mother's kitchen, you promised. <laughs> well, 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 Crinky. Front end of the giraffe, eh? Ho, ho, ho! Wait till everybody down at the lodge hears about this. Oh, Wilson, if you ever mention a mention word... Mention it! I'm gonna shout about it! Everybody will know. Unless... Uh, unless what? Those skeletons in my closet? Good friends do keep each other's secrets, Mr. Crinky. They go through thick and thin for each other. Ha, <laughs> ha, good boy, Dennis. You will keep my secret, George. Well, if you keep mine. I hate to do it, but it's a deal. No skeleton in your closet in the article. Just George Wilson, good citizen. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, good. Dennis, I don't know how two such good friends as Mr. Cricky and myself can repay you. You can help out the first Monday night of next month. Oh, what's happening then? Us Cub Scouts are gonna have another circus. This time for everybody in the whole town. And I'm gonna be the elephant trainer. What? One of you can be the front end of my elephant, and the other can be the rear. <laughs> Great Scott! <laughs>
This has been a Screen Gems film production from the Hollywood studios of Columbia Pictures.